Wednesday, May 18th, 2022. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> for the 2022 resurfacing program of various roads in Erie County. First bid is for and Payton. Bond is attached. Their bid is two million seven hundred fifty three thousand nine fifty four point eighty five. That's two seven five three nine five four point eight five. Right. Second bid is with Barry Blacktop. The bond is attached. And their bid is two million eight hundred fifty-five thousand six hundred and four even. That's two eight five five six zero oh four point zero zero. And that's all we have. Uh, move. We turn these over to the engineer for review. Second. Mr. Old. Yes. Mr. Chalkner. Yes. Mr. Yes. Thank you. bid amount is four hundred twenty two thousand three hundred fifty dollars motion to turn those the bid over to department of environmental services for review second mr old yes mr Schaffner. yes mr Tenaga. thank you you hear uh, kind of go over the plan and I take it what you changed is only in the red. What did you do this? No. I, I guess we had to change well, yeah we've made some modifications in the regs to and come into compliance with the EPA's permit general construction permit and that's uh, they, that cycles every five years right but so the someone came on said we had to revive we had to come into compliance with there was one we had to pick one of was there five or six minimum 
remote control measures? There's six of them, but there was certain ones we had to do extra um, tasks as the MS-4 in order to um, allocate different, it's called a TMDL, so total maximum daily load. Basically, um, the EPA goes through and they sample the stormwater that's entering these streams and determines what different pollutants are um, problems in that area. And then we don't have to do any of the additional monitoring of the stormwater, but there are extra responsibilities that the MS-4 has to um, help minimize the amount of pollutants that are entering the storm system and the streams. So you mean by pollutants, you mean soils? Um, so Erie County has three different total maximum daily load um, pollutants of concern. They are in the Huron River, the Sandusky River, the lower portion, and the Sandusky Bay tributaries. Um, it's based off of watersheds, and so the cities within those watersheds also have to, um, their MS-4 has to do extra responsibilities as well. But essentially it's, um, total suspended solids, which AKA that's sediment, um, TP, which is total phosphorus, and then nitrate and nitrites, which are basically just excess nutrients, is how they're referred to within the permit. Yep, I, I understand. But I'm more concerned with the solids. So the, the thing I'm, and, and I, I guess I didn't really look at this before, but am I reading this right that uh, every lot, one acre, even a lot that's less than one acre, it says lot, uh, disturbing less, do we have to file a, a stormwater permit for every house that's being built? No, they file, what they do is they file an application for a permit with us and then we make a determination if it's critical enough to need a permit, if they have to do anything special. Um, I'm gonna say 99% of the time I don't, I check off no permit needed. The big thing that uh, the less than an acre get, that EPA limits down to an acre, and we've had, I think, down to a thousand square feet in our regulations. For, it says less than a thousand square feet. Yes. But and that's, every lot is bigger than a thousand yes, square feet. Yes, we've had that in there for, 20 years now, probably. And what that does is gives us the ability to go in like when, let's say, over here, one prime example is Arby's just reworked their site for less than an acre. They wouldn't fall into the EPA requirements, but it kept, gets them into our requirements so we can get some type of uh, measure on the site that they didn't have before. Uh, Burger King was one when they did. So it's these smaller sites that remodel that we can try to catch either get some water quality in there or some water quantities uh, re, uh, reduction when they move forward with their remodeling without having to rework the whole site or crush them financially if they can't even do it because they don't have enough room. But let's take Arby's for example, and okay. they have no stormwater retention on that site. Right. Right. How, did you make them put stormwater retention Now they on have it? some, yes. They have oh. some in the back. They put an infiltration trench um, are you familiar with the used car, the Honda dealer that went in down to the used cars from the Honda? Do you, you ever notice that stone trench along the one, the south side of that property? Mm -hmm. I, I did. No. Yeah. It's the same. We worked that with them that they can drop a, a lot of their uh, discharge into that trench, let as much as can soak into the ground before it comes and, and goes back into the system downstream. So that's what we did with the Arby's. Well, my, my concern is specifically residentially. So back at Windermere, there's five, six houses under construction right now. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the procedure if I want to build a house there? Because I, I wasn't aware that every builder has to go to the Erie County Highway Engineer's Office and get a permit. Mm -hmm. you get a permit application. They file that. They don't necessarily have to have the permit. And I can make that determination out like at Windermere, you already have the detention in there and the water quality is in the detention basin. With the flat bottom detention pond that Steve says grows weeds. That yeah, way. the weed patch back there. Which we weeds. thank you very much for your uh, eloquent design. I don't know who designed that. But it worked. Does it work? I don't know. 
it's it's ridiculous. But the weeds filter out the nutrients and stuff. Exactly, that's what you're after. But unfortunately, the people like Steve that live around it don't like the mosquitoes. Well, so the, the what's the disease if, you get from mosquitoes? If the uh, Nile virus, Lyme, Nile, 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 Nile malaria, Lyme disease, Lyme disease, Lyme disease, would be Lyme disease from ticks. But you can get some of those if you don't keep the weeds down. So well, how do you get in there and mow it when the bottom's flat and full of mud? You can't. You can't. That's the problem. So you have to use herbicides to uh, control the vegetation. Chemicals? Yeah. See, and I, there's I some think that, are, that Steve wouldn't like that. There's some that are licensed for water, so you can either get uh, deformities from the chemicals or West Nile disease. I guess you got... Well, the way it was before it was remodified, it had a slope to it, mm -hmm. and it all drained appropriately like a swimming pool to a particular drain. But the four base should have been the only flat spot in there, right? It's That's big, big, though. Big spot that we had to redo, and I, my concern is is that uh, common sense seems to come, sometimes go out the window, and I know you, not guilty as you, you're a great great guy to work with, but when we put this in a regulation and you leave someday, oh yeah, you are retired. I forgot, but when I leave again, when you leave again <laughs> the second time, uh, and the next guy comes in. Uh, the next doctor that comes in to oversee this, my concern is that the home, everybody building a home <coughs> in Erie County is going to get run through the red tape and the six month approval process, which we've seen before out of that particular office. And that's why we've tried to keep these regulations as user friendly as possible. But this isn't user friendly. Why don't, why can't we say that if a residential lot, especially that's built in a subdivision, is not does not have to go through Erie County. Yeah, and they don't. That's right now you don't have to use the permit the permit application, I checked that off because you already have that system in place in your subdivision. I agree, but it says here that I'm required to submit a stormwater erosion control permit application right. PA. They yeah. may be required to submit a drainage plan or stormwater erosion control plan. That's what scares me because now you're gone and I go to build, and it's not me building a house by the way, but I'm saying a builder, a homeowner that's putting a $400,000 investment into our community that we're trying to encourage is now going to have to submit a drainage plan or stormwater erosion plan, which means an engineer is gonna have to do it. So I can't just go out and stake and dig my house. Now I've got to come up with a plan. I got to hire an engineer. And don't say it does it won't happen because it does happen in Avon, Ohio right now. Before we can build a house, we have to have our engineer come in with topography. So he has to go out and shoot the site existing. Then he has to get his permit. Then when it's all done, I have to pay it cost me $1,500 per house to have my engineer go out, plan it, uh, topography it, and then as built when it's done, a final grade, we have to go out and shoot it again to make sure everything's draining away. And, I, and, and this to me says that that could happen here too. Now, I think it's total lunacy to make a homeowner spend that much money like they do up there in the big city because we all know that we want the water to drain away, right? When we're all done, but and and the and the the subdivision has the stuff there to make the water drain away. Right. So I I just think this is not user friendly or could not be user friendly. It is under your world, but when you put something in writing, our folks over there sometimes are not the most reasonable. When it comes to enforcing what's in, in paper. But this section you're talking about has been in place for 20 years. Well, but you're saying you want to revise this. Let's revise it. Is this the chance to revise it? Take it out? Well, or just revise it. I don't know. I don't. What, what I. If I'm understanding this, this is the opportunity. To make revisions, is this like a, like you're saying, it's a time to do it? Well, we need to do it for our EPA permit, yeah. 
So why don't we why don't we look at that? I mean, do you guys understand what I'm trying to talk about? That our people that were building houses, when you talk about government regulations, it's getting more and more expensive for the permits and all the BS you got to go through. And this this one right here is could be another that you would have to pay fifteen hundred dollars to have somebody go out and do a topography. So, you, so if if I'm going to develop, I've got fifty acres of land and I want to put in a subdivision. I have to go through hoops anyway do. to do the subdivision to make sure that everything is good. The water is going to go here, but boom, yep, boom. Yep, yep. But I understand what Pat's now saying. You, if, now you want to build your house. If I well, You're but just a guy. I'm just thinking if I want to go build a house, I have a buddy who's going to give me a deal on land on Bogart Road, and I'm just going to go out there. It was a farm field. Now it's not. I'm going to build on it. It's less than an acre, or three quarters of whatever. No, let's say. Or, or do I have to go through this process? Yeah. To get it, that's my that's my only thing. If I'm just doing it myself, and all of a sudden, you got to pay. I have to find dollars. somebody to get me an engineering blah blah to do all that. I get it. The builder, I'm not going to build it myself. The builder might end up. There's another whatever he decides to charge to get it done, and it's well, part Steve, of the process. I'll, I get I'll give, that. But. I'll give you a great example uh, that made my head think about this. Is on the corner of Hole and Galloway. Yeah. The the. The, there's a lady that bought the land I have yeah. to know her and because she did five units versus four units she became a my she became a major subdivision I think it's called her minor subdivision but she became a subdivision to me she had to put a detention pond which looks like hell <laughs> on the corner she had to put catch basins storm sewers everything in where in the old days Ken all she would have had to do is sell Steve a hundred foot of her property and go build a house on it. Yeah, and then Steve goes and builds a house on there and he's pumping his basement out. There's no tile in, there's no storm sewers. Right. So he's pumping the water out of his sump pump down to the neighbors or downstream. He has water backing in around his basement because I've dealt with these all. Just so keep beds backing up because he's got no positive outlet. And when these people <coughs> come in with these minor subdivisions, four lots, and I've been doing this for but uh, if it's four lines, she wouldn't have to do any of it. She would have had to put that in. Not I wouldn't before. have signed off on the split. I wouldn't have done it. Because I know what Steve's going to deal with when he gets in there, or he's the first one in and everything's great because everything's pumped away. The next guy downstream builds his house. Steve's still pumping out and so soaking into this guy's yard up against his foundation. He's getting pissed. So he's calling up either the county or the township and saying, why does this guy get to pump his water out to detriment of my property, my house? Well, there's no storm sir. Why doesn't he have one there? Great well, nobody example. made anybody put one in. Great example. So what'd you do on Bogart Road with all those lots that are built down through there? They have a system behind them, and the detention basin is clear on the east end of that before the corner On Bogart house. Road? Yes, on Bogart Road. And Dawes had to put a storm sewer from the Bogart Road north all the way across that field to discharge into um, the Route 2 ditch. So all those houses, not only did it cut off the flows from behind them, so they didn't get flooded every time it rained, but it also gave them a positive outlet so that they could drain their basements and their lots. What size out. pipe is that? So it's 24 a across that field. It's in the front or the back? I don't know what that means. Is it in the front? Is it by Bogart Road or oh, is it in the back? The there? discharge across the field is 24 that outlets that whole strip. Behind the properties, there are catch basins located at every other property line, so right. every individual along there has a positive outlet to take their, their downspouts and their sump pumps and their footer tile, and, their, and uh, those Not are on the back, tile. and they're, I think without looking, there's probably 15s and 12s along the back side, and it also has a swale that cuts off the surface flows from the property into the field, so All they right. aren't I, inundated. I stand corrected then. So these lots, um, usually it's a put in, I make it put it in if they do three, not necessarily very often two, but three or more lots, three to four or five lots. Have them put the drainage in place with easements over so Steve can go out there and say, okay, I've got a problem with this tile, but it's not on my property. Well, the easements are in place so he can go out and unplug it okay. if it is causing him a problem. I, I, I have no problem with that. To be, that That's fine. I didn't know you were doing that on Bogart Road. But, yeah. Um, but what and we're that's why that lady now, along Galloway had to do the same thing. She wanted to put those in. There's no infrastructure in there to carry any of the discharge. And if you guys remember driving by there with the duck pond out there every spring, um, you'd see ducks in that field. And I said, well, I don't want to have 
these people call me after the fact, and then I it's too late. Dogs. I saw geese. I think you're confusing. <laughs> I saw some mallards in there once. No, so, so the process. So, if I was going to do, I'd be the first one in someplace, <laughs> and it, it, right now it's a massive cornfield, and I'm going to go in. I've got my perfect spot. I'm going to do this. Then what? And part of that overall look from your guys would be, but well, wait a minute. It's not necessarily going to become a subdivision right now. Steve's just going to grab this piece and he's going to build his dream house. Okay, but part of your discussion of what to do with that would come into the fact of, well, what if it is developed in the future? Because then if I, or if I'm the guy on the island, because I'm doing what I'm doing, and then somebody does come in down the road, how does that impact me if I'm already in? I, I think you have a better question. Matt buys a lot out on Berlin Heights. Yeah, I was going to say, let me ask my question. Oh, okay. yeah. If I buy oh. my lot out in Berlin Heights, <laughs> that's just me, one house, do you have the right to come in and impose this on me? You would fill out a permit, and I don't do that. We do. You, would, you, you personally wouldn't do it. don't. I look at the lot individually. But this says, the next are there house. any circumstances on yeah. here that would require that he needs to file some kind of a plan? Is that right? Does he yeah, know he came sense. out of the city, he doesn't have a clue of the farmer selling that lot because he can't farm it because it lays underwater. Yeah, all correct. Time. Maybe maybe is there an outlet for that lot? Is there a way to, for him to drain that out? I look at that. Maybe well, we, we've month. been out with people that build in the, in the, the forest, in the farm field. Mm -hmm. They think they got a sweet deal, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know that floods, right. right? Well, if you're dumb enough to do that, shame on you. You know, people right. will warn right. you. But you you're a good guy but when your overzealous successor comes in are they going is there anything in here to codify what you're doing now or can they come in and say well you you're building you're going to be submitted to to everything that pat just suggested about having engineers and permits i guess i don't have engineers. yeah yeah, yeah they, they may, that's, that's they may. well that's that's the concerning part I mean, there's no problem with you and the way you handle it is good but is there a way to to write that in to give some some protection to property owners. Not in the subdivision sense. I mean, I think that's slightly but different. He, but that's a t that's, there's yeah. two different topics. Right. That's a topic. And then the topic in the subdivision is when Joe Blow, Cahovanian, builds a house, mm -hmm. what I think is ridiculous up where we build, up in the Cleveland area, is that we have to go out and spend $1,500 to hire an engineer just to, to do what, to me, it's the builder's responsibility to make sure that his basement doesn't leak. And the basement doesn't leak, you gotta have uh, drainage away from the yeah. foundation. Right, right. So, you know, what, what I'm saying is, it, it's, we're going into the big city rules that says, that's putting an extra cost on poor Steve building his new house in a established subdivision with the established storm sewers, with the established catch basin. But now we're making him, because we know Steve's not smart enough to grade his lot the way it should be graded. And he's gotta spend 1500. Which, we're, all we're here for is to protect, you know, we, we, wanna, we wanna be pro-development here in Erie County. We want people to build homes. We don't wanna put roads So do I, and that's why I've, I've been trying to keep these as user-friendly as possible, so to, to not choke off, you know, uh, building and Ken, you are user friendly. Nobody's saying that about you. I've worked with you for many, many years. You're a good guy to work with. But your office over there is not user friendly by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, uh, it's anti user friendly, in my opinion. Okay, one so, of the we're so concerned. On, so, on the back of the application, um, there's several boxes that I, that I can check off on. The what page on? is on uh, page says 35. I believe it's Appendix B. Appendix B. Well, no, I've got I've got page 35. It shows it use only. Issued a permit. Yep. No permit required, which is used as advised that imagine it's a it's at the discretion of whoever I would be. But one of your main questions would be the second from the bottom would be advised there is an existing approved stormwater management plan for this site which must be complied with so at Windermere there's already that is already in place so they can comply with that the detention is in there the water quality is in there the only thing they may have to do is have silt fence around the catch basin so they don't plug the system up for everybody else 
Right, but let's say your successor checks the next box, advise that a drainage plan must be submitted, reviewed, and approved prior to issuance of a permit. That's the box that scares me, because a drainage plan, at least in my world up there, is done by an engineer, it's done by TOPO, and it's done by final grade check. So that's where the $1,500 problem comes in, because the builder can't do that. The builder can't go out, he doesn't have the ability to show you what the existing TOPO is, and he doesn't have the ability to show you final grade. You can look at it and show that it's sloped away and everybody can go, yeah, that works. It's going to where it's supposed to go. But when you say you want a plan, right? that's where it gets into $1,500. But do you think it's wise not to have that in there? And let's take a, the other case scenario that we're out there in Berlin Township, you get ready to build your house. I already know there's a big issue there. You don't. You think you see it there in July or August when it's nice and dry, this looks great. I know there's gonna be a problem there. And I say, well, you may have a problem, you may not, but I can't do anything about it, even though I know about it because I have no regulations in place for me to protect you when you go out there and buy that or give you at least be able to force the seller before he sells a lot to you to make sure that's going to work so you're from the government and you're here to help I'm here to help you yeah no that doesn't work for me because <laughs> the same thing with your building permit next door and they want to watch me put a garage door up and pay me charge me a hundred dollars to do it or watch me put a new roof on and charge I understand that part of it. so there's my government so what's the balance in there my government well is there is there a way that you can notify you know Rather than impose us, you just notify the property owner in writing these problems exist. And sorry, you know, I've done that before too. If you are dumb enough to do this, you're going to live with the yeah, consequences. I mean, this is a free country, right? I mean, you know, if they're stupid enough to buy the lot that's in the swamp, why is that our problem to protect them? That's not our problem. I mean, this is a this is America. You could build your house in the middle of Lake Erie if you want to, but you know, I don't think we should even interject ourselves into that problem. I agree a hundred percent with your Bogart Road analogy. You've changed my mind on that. I did not realize you had put storm sir. We want it we want outlets for uh, some pumps. Absolutely. We've got Wexford over there with no catch basins. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. No no yeah. have a question about it. Uh, so that's good. But again that's a topic. We're talking about a different topic now. How do we not let the government run roughshod over poor Steve trying to build his dream house and make him pay another fifteen hundred dollars for an engineer? Is I'm just thinking, is there another way that we can get the information through a process? Like if I'm gonna build if I wanna build a house and I'm standalone doing my own thing, I've done this, where do I go? What, what's the first step I have to do to talk to to do it? If oh, you get to go to the local building department. Okay, so maybe the, maybe <laughs> maybe the effort should be there that they have brochure, whatever you want to call it, because you can look at it or not, but explains this I, I, and says I, if you're building a house in Erie County, these are things that you know, and they can choose to throw it out there like everything else, or they can look at it and say. Township. Go to the zoning office, pull a permit, and start building your house. That's yeah. what it was for yeah. years. And and that's and that's my concern is that exact example. Right. When we all this is the way we think, but right. the government is moving towards I mean, think of how many people they have over there now in Perkins Township that they didn't have fifteen years ago. Now they're driving around looking for problems. <coughs> you can look at them. I mean, it just makes the information there. The the people who are coming yeah, up yeah, after yeah. you but just don't have your I know, I know that's what I'm saying. In too many cases, and that's where I'm concerned that this would go. That this, this is where we're headed. Is we're going to have four people out inspecting every lot in your county and then making them put up silt fence. And it's not only the hiring the engineer. You then got to pay the the guy who's moving the dirt to grade everything. I mean, you have additional expense. And Ken, well, one of the things. Example. Is, let me give you an example. When we put a storm. <coughs> What's that? that? When we put a storm pipe in, which you were involved in, and we had installed a plastic pipe, and it was two inches 
because they didn't count the, the eight inches of 304s. So it was two inches too low. We had to rip out all the plastic pipe, put in concrete pipe. You were there. Oh, that was under the road. It was yeah. under the road, Yeah, which was ridiculous. And that's where government can use its heavy hand to make things cost more money. What we're trying to not have here is the government use heavy hands because once you open the door for the government to come in, not you, I'm not, we're not picking on you, but you're allowing them to be able to just do more and more and more. I mean, ultimately, uh, you know, you can control things like uh, downspout connections. You know, can you, do you want the downspouts tied in? Or do you want the downspouts to drain onto the splash pads? Which one do you want? I don't know what you design for. If you design for the surface water to go into the storm collection system, or in a lot of cities, what they're doing now is, no, we don't want the downspouts put into the storm collection system. We want you to let the downspout go onto the land so it naturally filters through the lawn and gets the pollutants from the lawn care into the system. I mean, it's, 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 I don't know what you do, but, but we're, you see where this is going. It's just add more and more and more cost to the consumer. So what would, what would be, uh, but, but real quick though, the reason this, some of these are in here and that's for one of them. Right now, EPA re regulates down to one acre. By EPA regulations, you have to do that. The same goes for a common plan of development. So the subdivision at um, Strub and Galloway that you were talking about previously, um, if you purchase a plot of land and you have the intention of selling off individual plots smaller than an acre to get around needing the EPA permit, if it's that is considered a common plan of development and you are required to treat that as it's one acre or greater. So the reason I gave some of these but what about the lot, the choices? But, but does the EPA say that you have to control a lot in an approved subdivision? If it's gonna be a common plane of development, an acre or greater, yes. Let's she, talk English. I don't know what common plane of development is. So when she purchased the plot of land, she had the intention of- No, no, go, go back to Windermere subdivision. I wasn't here for Windermere subdivision. Well, just talk about the Windermere subdivision. It's a multiple subdivision with an approved storm. Does the guy building a lot According to the EPA, you have to get a permit. According to the EPA. From the EPA, yes. It does have to get a permit? Because it was the it was the common subdivision that they were planning on selling individual lots. So I understand. Now that's done and it's approved. The EPA, you got the permit. Now Steve wants to build a house. Does Steve need to comply EPA wise and get a permit? Or is that an Erie County regulation? The common plan of development is when there's an individual builder that is that purchased a plot of land and is planning on building each house and selling the houses individually, not the individual lot. The individual lot gets transferred with, like the permit transfers with the lot when the new person purchases it. I don't even know what that means. So the so subdivision's in charge, the subdivision. not me. If I'm, an, if I'm going into a subdivision and I want to go to the end of the street, no. I get kind of pushed into the subdivision regulation. The permit, the permit to Pat Fold to right. build that subdivision for each road you control. Yep. By, by the EPA regs, when Steve buys a lot, yep. you transfer part of that permit to Steve, so he's still under the permit. That's why I put in there, if the storm, if the de development has a, a drainage and plan in place, yep. then I can check that box off. You don't have to go out and make a full-blown plan on your individual lot to cover the things that the subdivision already does. Because I'm in that subdivision. Because you're in that subdivision. That's what, that's what I want to hear. So, yeah. so, so Steve so, doesn't need... But that's that's right. your option. That's you your option. To require them. No, it's not, in, within the subdivision, you have it. So that's why that checkbox is in there. You automatically what? have it. And you, but if you buy that, bought that lot out in the middle of the field and you want to do it, yeah, EPA let's, can come in, yeah, and require you to do that. Let's not but do we're doing the, I want to keep the control local so that we're doing it, that we're making the decisions rather than having everybody file plans with EPA for every individual. Ken, I, I understand that 100% what you just said. But what happens, Steve buys the lot in the established EPA, whatever plain subdivision it is, and what happens if the box, the person, checks the box that 
advise that a drainage plan must be submitted, reviewed, and approved prior to issuance of a permit. Why, why does that box have to be there? Why don't you just take that box out? Because that box, uh, I need to see it real quick. I, I <coughs> shut my eyes. That's the box that causes the problems right there. Yeah, you're saying don't make it even an option on the form for the yeah. places that it it's doesn't, automatic. it's not relevant. It's automatic. It's already in the EPA permit. So that would apply to a lot that's outside of subdivision. Well, then so add that in there. Let's say that we, we determine we need a plan. You can't just build or you're going to have to dike it and pump it. So we need a plan. Where are you going to pump the water to, et cetera, et cetera. So Agreed. This gives us the option. The, the so, but what about if you added comma unless it's in an approved subdivision? It's already there. I wouldn't check that one because they're already in a subdivision. Why wouldn't you check that one? You certainly have the option to check that one. Well, I could check them all every time. You could, yeah. I mean, but the, this, the, the next second to the last one is set up for subdivisions. It's already there. You, you have the uh, protection of the subdivision permit already. Where does it say that? I don't see where it says that. It says advised there is the existing advised approved existing stormwater approved management stormwater plan, plan of this site. For that site that must be complied with. And then an approved site, it would say whatever, when in their subdivision. So that option's already there. Right, but then you also just said you have the option to check the box up above. Well, I said I could check them all. Yeah. But they wouldn't apply because you could prove out that you already have a plan. I'm just telling you that where this is going in the future, after you leave, is that we're going to start doing topos existing and topos on final grades. Really, the subdivision. I guarantee it, because that's what they do up in Cleveland, in the big city. So the ramification of, because clearly this section A, the residential, where it says any entity performing the earth disturbing that section one dot thirty one. If that went away, A, just literally we cut it out. The end result would be A. Buyer beware, I'm an idiot, I built where it floods. No, you know, okay, you're on your own. B, I, I say I'm the first one in this place there at Hull and Galloway. It's no, I just bought a little piece. And like you said, I'm just, I'm good because I'm pumping it this way and I'm pumping it this way. You could run in the condition where somebody buys the lot, a lot next to me, and now all of a sudden they've got to deal with all my water and all my runoff and all this stuff and then is that kind of the A and the B to this? If we if we would eliminate this section about the, you have to submit the stormwater management, blah, 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 for the residential. What page is that on? I'm sorry. It's page two of the very front part of it, where it's talking about requirements. The bottom of page two, residential. And if that was just eliminated, my mind is going to those two scenarios. One where it's on the buyer, buyer beware, I'm an idiot, I didn't know, it's low, it floods, I can't get rid of the water even if I tried, blah, blah, blah. Or I get in there, I do what I need to do, and then I'm just pumping it down the hill to whoever comes in next, and they have to deal with my scenario. At what point does it blow back on me, being that first guy in who's took care of himself, I'm good, but everybody else is gonna have to deal with me. Well, part of the problem with taking that out is EPA requires us to regulate to one acre, one residential acre, one acre. Or more. This says or less. Uh, mine says an entity performing earth to one residential or one acre lot. Well, it should say one acre or more is required to submit a stormwater. You're missing more. See, I took it the other way. I thought this was an acre or less. Yeah, that's what I thought too. So that's a residential, you know, I get a little bitty piece of land and it's ridiculously a quarter of an acre, third of an acre, half an acre. This would take care of that now because everything above an acre, the EPA deals with. Right. That's so what I was add, thinking. You need to add more, one acre lot or more, that's what the EPA says, is required to submit a stormwater. So if I buy a three quarter acre lot, I don't have to do it. You don't have to. EPA wouldn't require you to do it. The EPA doesn't require it, but what we're saying is then you would fall into this, that section yeah. A. And I would do the review on the lot. When right. You file the application. That's, I try to get every application, everybody, 
I have trouble with some of the townships out in the, that I don't get the application in, so I can make that determination the easy one. And, they, and then down the road, then you start getting the calls when things aren't working out. Well, they and I, know. I won't say it, but I hate to say this. So I'm the first guy in, and it's a mile long stretch of road, but I'm the first one, and I'm thinking I'm, 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 high, I'm on the high end of this thing. I do my thing. It's a three-quarter acre. See, I didn't need the permit. Nobody came out and looked at it. I could have easily been underwater flooded, buyer beware. But I'm good. I do my thing, and I'm clearing on my land. I'm good. Next guy maybe skips a lot or what could be a lot. He's 100 yards down, builds there. Okay, he's good, but all of a sudden when it's crazy bad, he's like, wait a minute, I'm getting a lot of water in my yard. I'm getting a lot. So it's clearly going down a hill. Is the end result of that a ditch? Meaning everybody in there is going, hey, we yeah, got issues, we man. Now? Yeah, and that's this situation we try to head off. Right, that's what I'm thinking. Time. Everybody owns their own lot. Right. And now you got to either neighbors are against neighbors and they're going to give right. you an outlet across my lot. Exactly. I don't care if I'm drowning or not, I'll exactly. give myself an outlet but not you. Yeah. You know, so on these multiple lot splits, that's what I try to. So uh, there, there's a house going up at the end of Taylor Road. There at the end of Columbus, say it was a five acre lot. I happen to know the house. Big compound, five acres. Did he have to put a detention pot in to build one house on five acres? I wouldn't inquire, no. Why? Because on five acres, I can't see where the the individual would discharge enough water to be detrimental to somebody off site. Five acres is big enough to absorb any water that house. But Plus it's more than one acre. Why doesn't he have to say that again? It's more than one acre. It's five acres. It's five acres, single family residential. Yeah. Where's that? EPA exactly? or uh, regional planning doesn't I don't re regulate five acre parcels either, do they? I don't know. I don't think so. But but let in that instance, doesn't this mean I have to get an EPA permit? It says if you're going to disturb an acre or more. Yeah, you have by law. The threshold goes by how much earth you're going to be disturbing. So if you buy a five acre lot, but you're only disturbing half of it, then you don't have to do anything with the EPA. Well, how would you know how much I'm going to disturb? I'm going to grade the whole lot. Well, so we know you're honest. Most of the landowners are. They're going to come forward. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure. Because they want the government involved. Well, did, did you know about the five acre lot at the end of Strub Road? I don't know about anything that's not submitted to me. Well, then how did they you get the building? The east end? Huh? The east end of Strub? You mean Taylor? You say Taylor. 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 Taylor and Columbus. I Taylor. heard something was going to go in back there. It's already built. It's done. How's it look? Huh? How's it look? Beautiful. At the end of Strub, I can't picture it back there. Yeah, I mean, think How about. Far back it. in the field is it? Pretty far. That you said Strub. It's not Strub. It's Columbus. Oh, or Columbus Taylor. that ends into Taylor. Taylor. Columbus. Yeah, back in the woods back there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I talked to him when he was putting it in because. He needed an outlet for there, and I said, well, we were redoing that storm sewer along there. He furnished the catch basin so he could make it back, and we approved it, yeah. So he did get a permit? Yes? No permit. I've signed off on the application. He didn't need a permit. But if you weren't there, he would have had to get a permit, according to this. Could have. Could have. Could have. That guy made a different decision, yeah. Do you agree with could and should and will? And may <laughs> uh, in some circumstances but I mean that's that my point is I think we should everything we should be doing is figuring out how to be more user-friendly to the citizen however that may work out is there any way to define something that easily word. that's why I was trying to keep them user it, it, more user you friendly. you are the problem is the future is not bright I don't know if there's any and it's probably the wrong way to, to put it, but is there an easier way or a more user-friendly way to define things? Because whether you talk about the uh, submit the drainage plan, could you define drainage plan better somehow? I, I don't know. I mean, so the person wouldn't necessarily have to hire, so it wouldn't necessarily be the full-blown drawings and everything else. A drainage plan, meaning they have to come in and acknowledge with a picture or something and say, you know, the land isn't like this, right? Or it's not a bowl and it's... Well, it could be just as simple as uh, we'll have positive... I, I don't know. ...away from the structure. 
Because the, 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 real, the real thing that happens is 20 years from now, nothing happens between now and then, but 20 years from now, somebody gets in there with a bug and just says, nope, you need a permit. Nope, you need a permit because they can. Because that will happen, guaranteed. It will happen. At some point, it will happen. And somebody's just going to be that stickler, whatever people say. You have to follow these rules. The rule's there. You're going to do it. And we want to make sure that that doesn't become a thing. Yeah, I don't know how that would, I don't know And I don't know how to do it. I don't know. The best of both worlds, you want to make sure that people are protected. And sure. This is taken care of early on in the development or whatever, uh, and whether you have a crystal ball to see what's going to happen in the future. I know. And if you, if you live with this mess until you get to the future, do you... I don't know. I don't know what that answer would be. So. Well, That's, I, I, is the trustees, uh, you're a lot of the smaller townships that sell off farmland. You know, the farmer's got 100 acres, his son wants to build a house. Go build a house over there, boy. Do they, are they, do they know about this? I have no idea. The, sure you're, you're, you're asking the farmer or if the township, the township trustee? trustees maybe I mean through well, the association well the township trustees would know about the lot because someone would go pull a permit you know a zoning permit but or to, they would go to the zoning office and get a permit to build what's their idea oh, on this though well, a lot of the trustees have adopted these when I first put them out back in I think the first ones were 94 and so on I've put them out to the trustees for them to adopt them in their regular sessions, and for the most part, I understand the development that they have. Now, whether or not they do anything with them <laughs> right, is, exactly. is a very different story. And the big thing that I needed with the trustees was just so that they were semi-familiar with them and, and at least could direct the people in that wanted to build so we could keep it, keep it orderly, you know, and keep, keep the people, I don't want to say protected, but least informed when they're going in there because I've had a lot of them that I've informed and said hey you're buying into a mess it's going to be bad here um, you should rethink this but if they're you know absolutely dead set on having their lot there I've, there's some I wouldn't sign off on because they laid underwater all the time I just wouldn't do it so I wanted to, it wasn't necessary that I want to protect you because you owned it I just want to protect any you know, the buyers because they were wanting to sell it well I knew why they wanted to sell it was because they couldn't do anything with yeah, it. I can yeah. think of a lot right now. That's, problem that's, on. Yeah. That's, that's the scenario. New guy bought it, wants to sell it. It's underwater yeah. eight months out of the year. So when the splits come in and I sign off on them, I make a review of that before I'll sign off mm -hmm. so that they can do the splits. And so if they want to split forward lots off, then they have to give me, get, do a plan with the, the, the drainage in place so everybody that buys in there is not going to be having their septics backing up and they're pumping yeah. water on their neighbors, which we I, I, have a lot of out there too. We, we get that, that, that part, yeah. the Boulder Road idea, good idea, that, no question. And the split, you get the ultimate say to sign off on the split, and so that's your chance to say stop, time out, you might wanna wait on this. And you can not sign off on the split, as I understand it, so therefore the son can't build the house, because you won't sign off on the split. So there's your hammer. You don't even need this piece of paper for that. You could just say, I'm not signing off on the split because it's underwater. But going back to what the original, user-friendly, let's call it, we want to make sure that, especially in an existing subdivision, uh, that you know you, the box can't get checked by the next bureaucrat that says, oh, no, 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 I need a lot more information before I'm going to because you need a permit, because it's less than, it, it's a lot, so therefore you need a permit. That's the only question I think that we should be cautious of, you know, life after Ken. Oh, I don't know if to take the one, I don't know, if I'll look at it again, see if we take that one choice out on the check line that I have on the application, or whatever, but I've never had an issue subdivision that was has been built since we've got the regulations in place that requires the developer to put in a outlet at each individual lot they have and it's available to them within the subdivision the only thing that this this check within the subdivision is to make sure that the the system they don't come in and, and ruin the system either I mean they have to because I couldn't in Windermere 
where my Wyndham Lane stops, even though I'm guessing that eventually it could have gone further, I can't build on the further stretch without the road because there's no... Yes, you can. Is there anything there? Would I have to connect to sewer? There's no, is there a sewer? I mean, you know what I'm saying? I can't jump on my own, so I would always be, if it's a subdivision, I would only build in the subdivision proper, which has already been built out and it Planted. has. Yeah. yeah, but for his question is, he wants to build a house where there's no road in that particular subdivision. There's nothing there. I mean, you have to have frontage on a public right or on a public road or a private right but you he wants to build he's going to build somewhere his frontage is the end of the road okay so now he he could go build a house out in the middle of that field out there yeah. if he wants to yeah. and he's asking well where would you get the sewer that's an issue right. you right. deal with does right where are you going to get the water right. that's an issue you deal with does now, but i what i would be a part of that subdivision when it comes to this no, you'd be just a guy out in the middle of a field, just like if, if, if you were in Grove Township, in that case. Right. But the problem is, if you're going to build in that field out there, now you have to go see him, and he's going to say, where are you going to take your water to? There's no outlet. How big a lot do you have? Okay, you got enough right. for absorption, you're good. Or at the end of that street, if it's in a subdivision, there should be a storm sewer there if they absolutely need one. We've had... And this, a lot of this came in, came about too, was the uh, the old subdivisions, as you know, there's no outlets in them. They put enough to drain some of the streets. Right. The rest of the people, their back lots are flooded all the time. Right. All over the place. But, uh, we've done a lot of good. So if you just eliminate that. Yeah. The, the, in the old days, and I go back <coughs> as far as you do, in the old days, we put swales in the back of the lot. And if you remember, like in the meadows, going back 40 years, there's a swale runs all the way around the perimeter of that subdivision. Your sump pump is supposed to go into that swale, which is not a good situation. No Until a neighbor question. puts a shed in it or a flower bed and raises it up and then it's- We've had, or the guy next door downstream fills the swale in when he grades his water on. We get that. You have an easement that you could go and collect it. Uh, you could correct that, you know, which you've done past I can think of an example right now um, that you could do but but I think the the catch basin idea is better but that's already in there that's the subdivision we're, we're going back to protect the homeowner the guy Steve building the house in the subdivision and that's where I think it could there's there's some language in here that could get a little heavy-handed well, one of the things, the reason the one acre is in there is because, as we talked, EPA required it. So these regulations, once we get them in place, or revised, we've already sent down a copy so they know we're working on it because it's required of us to do that. And since they regulate down to the one acre lot, we have to have that in here. How we approach that is up to us, as far as I'm concerned. They're, they're, if they came down and, and they could say, okay, Steve, you got to have a plan on this. And they overrule us that's fine but generally they leave the enforcement to us right but steve's on a half acre lot he's not on a one acre so therefore epa has no jurisdiction. they don't they don't walk into it so it would be just local yeah what we and what we're trying to say is just local you know let's define it a little more user friendly that you know, would, you know, you know, is this to, is a solution maybe on this delineating between residential and commercial one acre and above, period, less than an acre on commercial. Because I think that's your concern, is that yeah. you've got the little commercial site that's all pavement. Is that my right? Well, that's true, what if you? I do, yeah, the commercial sites all have to have plans automatic. Yeah, they have what? drainage plans in. So, so this is only dealing with, with residential. So this, yeah, basically. That's why I'm saying that segment, that section A, just, if you get rid of it, that section, that one little paragraph A, where it's talking about the residential one acre, one acre lot is required to submit. If that just goes away. But EPA you, requires that, one acre lot. Yeah, you, would, you, you have one to have You have to word it so that whatever that threshold is, if the EPA is not gonna do it, we're not either, as far as requiring yeah. the permit kind of thing. Right. But just for the residential, but I get it. I mean, that's where I'm back to the two things. I mean, the two scenarios there are, I'm a jerk, because I just build what I want to build, man, and everyone else got to deal with my stuff. And hey, man, don't come to me. 
and I get it. Over the years, I've seen that, right? Neighbors are like, hey, he's flooding. He's on the top of the hill, and he's flooding everything. And then the next guy, he's flooding. So what do you do? You ditch, blah, blah, whatever you need to do to get that taken care of to, once it's off of the property. I get off the individual lines. I get that. That's not a great scenario. I don't think that's going to happen every time that something goes through. But you just mentioned, too, you guys know if I'm going to build and I'm going to build at that corner of Galloway and, and uh, Hull, and you kind of know it's a duck pond, right? It's a geese pond. It's, it's low. And if I was going to go there by myself and just buy the piece and try to do my thing, folks are going to know I'm going there. Nothing stops you, like you said, from going, hey, man, what are you thinking? This might not be a good idea because you better get a pump that can pump like crazy to get it out of from where you're going to be. That process could happen if there is no requirement to have this plan. Right, and then it's you know because you guys are going to know about these things when the permits start getting pulled. That's I don't know, I get it. I mean, it makes it makes sense because you don't want to have a scenario develop where you just have this water running down the hill and then it gets to the bottom of the hill and it just floods the intersection because there's no place for it to go. I get that, but. Well, it's it's the confluence of the subdivision regulations and right in the drainage plan. You buy the five acre lot and you don't intend to divide it, they're not going to bother you. If you intend to divide it, they're going right. to make you put drainage in so you prevent future problems. Right. So that's all fun. Can we move to another section? <laughs> <laughs> we, sure. We haven't had all of our fun yet. So if, if you move back into page 19 and 20, it looks like you guys added a whole lot of language on illicit discharge. Yes. What's, what prompted that change? So the MS4 permit is released, it was supposed to be released in 2019. That would have triggered the requirement of ordinance update to give those one year to do it from the effective date of the permit. Um, essentially before, we did not have anything What's safe. an MS4 permit? Okay, I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Valerie Stasek. Um, I work for Soil and Water Downstairs. I am the Stormwater Program Coordinator. Um, my job basically is dictated by this MS4 permit, which stands for Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System. Erie County is the permit holder, and then the urbanized areas within the county are pulled into this permit, and they're required to basically follow the six minimum control measures, which tell us what we can and can't do. Elicit discharge. Who writes that? The Ohio EPA. So they put six control measures in without your input? The EPA? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, yeah. Back in the 2003, this came into effect. Okay. That permit is the whole reason I have a job. Okay. That dictate, like my job is to tell the county what they're supposed to do. Oh, so you're from the government, you're here to help us. She took Melissa's to Yeah, you're, you're right. Melissa Pepper. Yeah, she's All right, there you go. So um, she's our interpreter for the EPA requirements because yeah. they don't make much sense when I try to read them. Well, yeah, really you, you got to interpret it back in English so she when can you talk to us. So <laughs> that's the yeah. tricky part. So, okay, so, so this permit came into effect in 19 and you had to comply with it within one year, but then COVID hit and the state government went home for a couple of years. Yes. So now we're doing this. Um, well, so the old permit remained in effect until the new one was issued April last year. So it's kind of like a recurring thing. It just keeps rolling over. We have to go into the EPA and renew our coverage, but I mean, that's, we don't have a choice. We get fined a lot of money if we don't renew the coverage. We mean you guys. In Erie County. Yes. Um, sure. So, so our illicit discharge ordinance was incredibly archaic. It didn't really say anything about giving us permission to go on site and do inspections, which is the minimum control measure three of the permit. Um, basically, the permit says, do you want English or permit ish? Let's go English. I think English yeah. would be much, <laughs> much better. better. Okay. Um, so it says, to the extent allowable, we have to prohibit through a regulatory mechanism, which in this case it's the regulation, um, illicit discharges into the storm system and implement the appropriate enforcement procedure. So basically saying if there is an illicit discharge suspected, we have, not we necessarily, the health department goes out and um, they do an inspection on what the illicit discharge is and then if it's sewage, we have to notify the EPA if it's actively contributing sewage and essentially the old ordinances didn't have any 
um, it didn't give us authority to go on site and do the investigation and then determine where it's coming from. Um, we've had to con contact DOES and do tie, tie testing before. Um, the most recent illicit discharge call we had was in Perkins Township. Um, it was the Hamad Tire, Great Lakes Tire. Um, one of their employees called and said that they were instructing their employees to dump antifreeze into the floor drain, which was tied into the storm system. So in which case, I went out, I inspected, visually inspected the storm system on site, determined that the floor drain either wasn't getting antifreeze dumped into it or it wasn't tied into the storm system. Um, we tried getting the plans for the building to see if, to verify that the floor drain was tied into sanitary and in which case the case was handed off to Bill Fleck um, to handle the dye testing and the sanitary sewer oh, yeah. dye testing. Essentially it was determined that it was going into the sanitary sewer and not the storm sewer. And so um, they had to have, it's a, it's a special permit that DOES um, will give people to discharge certain pollutants into the sanitary system if they weren't aware of it happening around. So under illicit discharge, does that include roof water, gutter water? No, an illicit discharge, according to the EPA, is anything going into the storm system that is not entirely comprised of storm water. So when the storm water falls on the roof, true, it <coughs> does pick up pollutants, but then there's supposed to be, we try to have certain mechanisms in place. So either your downspout gets disconnected, and then in that case, um, the grass actually slows down the storm water. It, dissipate some of the energy, it's not as erosive of a flow, so it doesn't pick up as much sediment. And then as it's spread across the grass, um, it can filter into the grass rather than just being shot into the nearest stream. So a, a do my downspout that's tied into a pipe that goes directly into the storm system, is that an illicit discharge? No, that is fine as well, because it's rainwater that's going under your roof. If but it's picking up all the asphalt stuff that's coming off the roof. Well, we can't suggest that people don't have roofs. Um, I think that but the- you could suggest that it doesn't tie into a pipe and it goes across the grass. But that's private property, and I, I can suggest anything that I want to. It doesn't mean that people are actually gonna do it. What about new construction? What about new construction? Could you say under new construction, we don't want it tied into a pipe because it, we want it to go across the grass? Soil and water has no enforcement authority, and so I can make recommendations to the engineer when I'm doing the stormwater pollution plan review. I can recommend that they do other things. Ken can also recommend that they do other things, but as far as forcing anyone to do anything, I, I can't deny their plan just because they want their gutters to tie into a storm system. Right, you can't, but the, the new can can. Is that right? I don't know as far as pollutants, usually they're down, like she said, the downspouts aren't considered a pollutant, so you can hook them into the storm sewer. How about a floor drain and a garage floor? That's supposed, and by building codes, that's supposed to go into the uh, sanitary. So that's covered. But if they tap it into the storm. That is in the building code? Pretty sure it is. But it would be an illicit discharge. <coughs> if they brought the storm sewer, it would be. That would, that's, that would qualify. That storm. would call, qualify yeah. for this. And if, she went to the site and they dyed that floor drain and it came out and they would have to disconnect it. Well, we don't do floor drains at garage floors, but we slope the garage floor that, so the oily water from the leaky car goes out, down the driveway and right into the storm sewer. Is the garage floor an illicit discharge? If there's a sheen across the water and it comes in the storm and they track it back to that well, house. Think yeah. about it. Yeah, it would be. Maybe you can't slope the garage floor. That's not in the building code, by the way. You can have a sloped garage floor and it goes out. But I mean, as far as illicit discharges, it has, I'm not gonna say it has to be brought to our attention, but most of the illicit discharges we deal with are complaints, whether it's called into us, whether it's called into the MS4 community particularly, or if it's called into the EPA, they have come to us and they have said, like the Hamad Tire illicit discharge, that was from the EPA. Same thing with, in the city of Vermilion, someone was caught dumping apple cider vinegar into the storm drains, and that was an illicit discharge. Since whoever called for the complaint, they called the complaint into the EPA, since whoever the complainant was didn't want to give their name, we sent me 
as the stormwater coordinator, I provided education and was a targeted mailer about what an illicit discharge is, what you're not allowed <coughs> to put in the storm system, and I also provided education on why it's bad. And then I had to follow up with the EPA saying, as the MS4, this is what we did to combat this because there was no way to confirm it was hearsay. One neighbor said they did it, another neighbor said they didn't, and so we just provided blanketed education to everyone to let them know that you can't do that. So, for instance, on Campbell Street, where up here, where the illicit discharges of sewage into storm sewer directly into the creek, and the EPA was notified, and everybody got all up in arms, and then it kind of nothing ever happened. When it, there's no enforcement, basically, what you're saying. Is that in Perkins Township or the city of Kentucky? Perkins. I can't say about that, to be honest. I would, I don't know anything about, don't it. Know about it. But you say there was a, well, we knew there was, we had some on Campbell Street. That's what I said. Yeah. I thought they took care of that. I thought the health department went and jerked and cleaned that up. We turn it over to them. I don't go out and take sample it. I, once, if I get a complaint or she gets a complaint, <coughs> We take it to the appropriate uh, well, there's department, that, there's if it's the health department, or if it's in the, you know, it's like back Bayview sewers. Dump, if it's one of those, it's dump. Bayview, every, every, every septic tank in Bayview was tied into a storm sewer. And like they, had a, dis, they had a permit to discharge that stuff into the bay. Yeah, <laughs> they did. So. They could discharge so much into the yeah. bay because it was diluted. Just like Not Sandusky, the when their system was overloaded by all the rainwater, yeah. they just opened the gates at the end and all yeah. pushed out the bay anyway. Well, that's true. But combined system, that's what they had to until they got that system in now Bayview's you know, they're hooking them all up to it. Yeah. yeah. It's all fixed now. But but you have to have millions of dollars to fix it. Right. And some of those, you know, like when she gets the report in for those, I think I remember the one of Tom's over there dumping had a broken line that was dumping milk into the bay. We do hear you up for that one. Matt, did did you have more on that? Well, I was curious. I mean, you just read it. It sounds, you know, Erie County uh, may seek uh, issuance of an inspection warrant with civil remedies, including but not limited to injunctive relief, criminal remedies, or in, from a court of appropriate jurisdiction. You know, we're talking about being friendly, and then I read, we're coming in and we're going to sue you. Well, that's oh. for that's for the vi for uh, wanton violators. And I ran that by our law department downtown before I put that in. I want to make sure that we could that was appropriate. Legal, and they they gave me the uh, they they we changed a little bit of it to make it make it so that it was uh, compliant and legal. So I don't Only see compliant through EPA, but legal for us to be able to do it. Yeah, I don't see what this used to say. I just see what it says now. So I, was that something like that in there prior no. to this, or was this whole section added? This was added. Okay. The enforcement part, which EPA has been leaning on us <coughs> in place, so when we get a complaint goes a little further than just don't do that again uh, mm -hmm. especially from the ones that won't comply there's no there was no mechanism to force them to comply I mean we could keep sending them letters and they just call the bluff yeah you know, what they wanted so yeah because the other section that just raised my alert level is the prohibition expressly includes without limitation illegal connections made in the past regardless of whether the connection was permissible under law it's like i built my house and i guess i was thinking this more is into the the, the gutters yeah going down i i just but that that was that's more to address septic tanks because they were they were authorized to be outletted in yeah well that regulation is changing and soon none of the septic tanks will be Permitted to tie in, but if people. But is that you or is that the health department? CPA and the health department. Okay. They work with those. But that's that would be an illicit about. discharge that we need to get out of the line. So it was pre existing and it was legal, but now it's not and we have to get it out of there. So that that's what that wording is in there for. Okay. But you're not going to go out and do this. You're going to turn it over to the health department and then they're going to go out. Um, Usually what we work on are complaints. If we don't go out and inspect your lot. We don't go out and inspect him. If we get a complaint from downstream, as far as I, I know, then we turn that over to the appropriate departments who handle that type of a discharge. If I'm right on that? Um, typically, yes. We will go out and determine if it's a stormwater issue, if it's a stormwater illicit discharge, and then once anything sanitary or E. coli is involved, that's when it gets turned over to the health department because they don't 
Yeah, I just don't want a new agency that's going out onto my property and telling me what to do. No, no exactly. I mean, the health department has that, and, and that's okay. Yep. Okay, I have no more questions. Um, on the pipe itself, Ken, where you get into the different types of pipe that are in here. What page are we on now? Um, well, you can basically go back from 48. Okay, I think it's on uh, 50. Yeah. There seems to be some confusion. Okay. On. Under C, it says pipe 12 inches to 36. Okay. PVC, is that the corrugated stuff? Or PVC corrugated pipe with smooth wall interior, 46 PSI, or polyurethane HDPE triple wall pipe. There seems to be some confusion on whether or not the sub base stone underneath, does that count towards the cover according to the uh, engine, toward the manufacturer's specifications. So an engineer told me that that according to the pipe manufacturer, you got X number of fill over top of it where it's going underneath the road mm -hmm. is, I don't know what the exact inches is, but there's, say, call it 12 inches. Okay. Do you count this, the 304 sub base <coughs> as part of that, or does it, because the manufacturer says yes, as far as the cover, and the Erie County Engineer's Office says no, you have to go from the bottom of the eight inches of 304, which is why we had to rip out all the pipe. Yeah. So, I, can we get that clarified in this document? That well, this document doesn't really address yeah. subdivision road construction. That construction is, is is under the subdivision regulations. But couldn't you These just this? Well, the the pipe type in here is is for the most part on uh, minor subdivisions. It is. I thought it. Covered. It's okay. It, it yeah, it would apply in this. They are within the subdivision regulations, but I don't know what the structural strength is under the road when they put the pipe. I don't know where that measurement is. Well, could you just where add, your sub base ends? I could you add. just say for manufacturer's instruction recommendations, cover shall be by manufacturer's recommendation. Because a concrete pipe is going to have a different fill requirement. Every one of these pipes could have a different fill requirement as it goes down through. That's why it's important to say that you want to you want to have the appropriate cover that uh, gives you the structural strength. Yeah. By what the manufacturer says of his particular type of pipe, right? I think it, if you add that sentence in there, that it clarifies and it, and it doesn't let uh, personal opinion come into play. That's what we're trying to eliminate is personal uh, opinions on what should be and shouldn't be. You should have it in writing and now's the chance to do it, isn't it? Say per manufacturer's instruction. Well, it does have a little thing that says, or shall be in accordance with such other specifications as may be shown on the plans or ordered by the engineer. That's the or that gets you. That's why it takes Okay, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna mix these with uh, the uh, subdivision regulation and construction requirements. Um, I don't know what those numbers are. Um, the engineers to do the road work, I don't, you know, I try to stay away from that. But can't we put it in here? I don't you're, know if these would supersede the stormwater rec or the subdivision rec or not. I don't know. Well, you're, I don't want to go out on a limb and say yes here and then get back there. Well, numbers. That's something that's totally different than but, what they're requiring over there. I'm with you, but number three says storm pipe and pipe specifications. So pipe specifications to me kind of supersedes whatever somebody over there wants. It's the or ordered by engineer that makes gives me heartburn. 
what, what number are you on? Page uh, 50. Page 50. Right in the middle. A. General? Yeah. Yeah. It says, following specifications shall be in accordance with the manufacturer is all you have to do. Well, the pipe pipe specifications, yeah, that would be, that would come. In the ODOT manual, they show that, that you have to provide us a specification slip from the manufacturer wherever you got the pipe. I agree. So Unfortunately, the or ordered by engineer is the problem. Well, the, the pipe specification just shows you how it was made. Is it a class B pipe? Is it a class C pipe? doesn't have anything to do with sure it does it tells with, you that with the uh, with the cover yeah there's a graph in there that shows you on what the cover is to give you a certain structural strength on top could you just can we just remove that or ordered by the engineer that's kind of wide open well just look at it again uh, if, if maybe I'm wrong I mean you know the situation yeah I don't think I can regulate it with these with what they want in their engineer plan you know I don't well that's I think we're asking for something pretty pretty non-generic actually so formality question this we're doing this in accordance with section 307.79 of the administrative code or the, yeah, the, code. Code. Yeah. the 0779 so the reason we're involved is because we have to approve this right we have to schedule two public hearings and then we approve these. yes okay so if we don't approve it what happens we don't get the revisions we we live with the old ones but then we're in violation of the <coughs> ms4 permit that we're and then signed on to mm -hmm. what happens then we're in violation I don't think we have been, so I guess. But what if we we'll are? Find out. Let me I assume they bring levy fines on us in violation. Or we, we really know. don't want to have them come in. Here. But they're they, already in they here. Come in and, I know, but they come in and monitor the system more closely and or. Yeah. Like we don't we have findings and orders now? Around. Yeah, but we don't want <laughs> poking around. More. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we need, so that's our feedback, I think. And now we need to schedule two public hearings. Is that. Is that accurate? I believe so. Okay, so we'll get those scheduled and hopefully you guys can figure out how to incorporate some of this into it for the public hearings and then we'll get them, get them approved. We need to send this out to the trustees. And I don't know what the notice provisions are. I mean, we probably, sure. we probably should notify of the public hearing. Right, and like, yeah. like you do for any other yeah. yes. hearing in paper, paper for two weeks. And stuff. on the website. Yeah, and if you want to get it out to the trustees for it that's fine I mean, um, yeah I, don't, I would certainly like the trustees to be not only aware of but also want to have them adopted in so that everything's uniform you're that's a, by that's the a safe good, rules no matter where you go that's a good question do these because you have jurisdiction over the cities right you're out there in, within the cities no oh, she is in the city cities, she works with the cities some townships and some villages these are for the unincorporated area this right is right just right? for the unincorporated now we have had but the townships can't adopt anything that supersedes these right not that i'm aware of we're we're putting these in place for all the unincorporated and they have to live with it we that's, that's what i think but if the trustees adopt it makes it a lot easier to have the have the public informed when they come into the township office okay. to get a permit they know okay you need to go up and get this application signed off so we can move forward so we know there's no problems when we give you a building permit on this but the cities have their own rules, which you yes. know, and you enforce yes. on a per city, and even in Perkins and Margareta Township, is that right? Mm -hmm. In the city of Sandusky, they don't have any jurisdiction. She does. She does. Ken not does. not Ken, but she does. Oh, so she's the so reason that all their sewers are dumping into the lake? No, but she's the reason why I'm thinking parking lots are the way they're built now, right? The way they build the parking lots with the semi-permeable, blah, 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 and all that other extra gap, you know, it catches the water, and that's what they do. To combat the amount of runoff right. that's entering the combined sewer system because the drainage infrastructure yeah. helps retain some of the runoff rather than just sending it right out to the lake. So when they built the building in downtown Sadusky on the corner there, you're saying you had, they had to get a permit from 
you to do that? No, I review when they submit all the pile of plans that they need to get the building completed, one okay. portion of it is the stormwater pollution prevention document. Okay. And that is the only part that I have anything to do with. Yeah, and essentially they, they contract with her to, to right. do their regulation. Yeah. Right? Only the stormwater end of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So when they're, you're getting your permit, she's checking that portion. And when you say contract, so the city has a contract with soil and water to do that piece? It's a memorandum of agreement. We have and they pay you to do that? A portion, yeah. How much do they pay you per year? The city of Sandusky specifically? Yeah. They pay soil and water 14000 to help facilitate the stormwater program that we now also coordinate. I didn't know that. Each member pays into this. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's a member of this conglomerate that uh, commissioners and uh, different political subdivisions that are a party to this that. MS4. Yeah. Well, basically, well, rather than have one of their people do it. Right. No, they did for Huron for a while. Vermillion also. Vermillion Does it go to us? Strong. Probably goes to them. We Soil and water them. account. So this does. It doesn't touch the commissioners. It goes right to soil and water. If it's from the other entities, yes. It meaning. But I believe the other entities just go direct deal directly with soil and water. It doesn't necessarily come to the county first. Other end of what? I'm sorry. Yeah, there's so soil and water gets a grant. Right. It doesn't flow through the. It doesn't right. flow through the commission to appropriate. The only thing we do is. This question was if the city's paying us for a service. Um, normally, you know, would that come through our? No, because it's paperwork gonna, first and then turn around to you. It's that an was agreement the between the district and the city. Yeah. And it's I the individual. The She's not. That paid my understanding my school but she's not paid by what the money we give soil and water nor the match right I mean you're right. essentially funded right. just by the jurisdictions that you yes represent yes. Mm -hmm. didn't know that okay all right thank you thanks guys Cheer up. <laughs> thank you oh, I'll get questions. back to the one that you touched on like when a developer comes in whether it's a commercial site residential whatever's going in when they submit plans, she reviews and approves the stormwater, the uh, the SWIP, or the stormwater pollution prevention plan part of it. I do the, the drainage and the retention areas, but the, then she handles all the field work as far as inspecting to make sure the sill fences go in and they're working and they're kept up and the different practices that are on that site, whether it's residential or commercial, are kept up for through the entire development session of that. She's out there a lot more than I am on each individual site. Okay, thanks. Ken, yeah, don't retire again. We have resolutions. We do. Let's get moving here. We're way thank behind you. schedule. Thank you, thank you. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Move for adoption resolution board of commissioners for the purpose of authorizing Memorial Day appropriations under section 307.66 of the ORC. Second. Mr. Shocker? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Move for adoption resolution, Board of Commissioners, for the purpose of entering into agreement with Jamie's Carpet Shop. Second. Mr. Shopner? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Shiner? Yes. Move for adoption resolution, Board of Commissioners, for the purpose of declaring certain area county equipment surplus and ordering same to be sold by internet auction. Second. Mr. Shopner? Yes. Yes. <coughs> Move for adoption resolution, Board of Commissioners, for the purpose of declaring certain items surplus and ordering same to be discarded or salvaged. Second. Yes. 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 Move for adoption resolution, Board of Commissioners, for the purpose of entering into an agreement by and between the Erie County Family and Children First Council acting through its administrative agent, the Board of County Commissioners of Erie County, and the Erie County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Second. Mr. Shelter? Yes. Mr. Yes. Move for adoption resolution, Board of Commissioners, for the purpose of entering into an early intervention service coordination grant agreement by and between the Erie County Family and Children First Council, acting through its administrative agent, the Board of County Commissioners of Erie County, and the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. Second. Mr. Shopner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Ready to go. Move for 
Move for adoption resolution to Board of Commissioners for the purpose of authorizing the county auditor to make supplemental appropriations. Second. Mr. Shelfman? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of Board of Commissioners for the purpose of authorizing the county auditor to make interfund transfers. Second. Mr. Shoffman? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shanahan? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of Board of Commissioners for the purpose of authorizing the county auditor to make payment to the Erie County Treasurer. Second. Mr. Shoffman? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shanahan? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of Board of Commissioners for the purpose of authorizing the county auditor to make payment to Mrs. Ann Massey. Second. Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shanahan? Move for adoption resolution, Board of Commissioners, for the purpose of submitting the Ohio Department of Youth Services Subsidy Grant Juvenile Court Funding Application Update. Second. Mr. Shoffman? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shanahan? Move for adoption resolution, Board of Commissioners, for the purpose of entering into a subgrant award agreement with the Ohio Department of Public Safety Office of Criminal Justice Services. Second. Is that that? Is that that money for? Extradition for the extradition. Yeah. Oh, Owens. We didn't hear on the $100,000. Not yet. We're, we'll hope to have that resolution next week. Did we hear? We need the resolution first before we'll hear. So. <clears throat> Sorry. Right. Are we ready? Go ahead. To the next one? Or we, what would we do? No. Motion and a second? Second. Mr. Shelfman? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Move for adoption resolution, Board of Commissioners, for the purpose of executing payment and then and now certification. Second. Mr. Shoffman? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shanahan? That's it. That's it. Well, I can tell the pandemic is over based on the number of, number of travel forms that we have going through and the number of people who are <coughs> attending conferences again. So yep. I think we've been officially declared under the pandemic today. Um, I have a question about this youth career coach specialist. What's the story of this? Yeah, so the story on that is that was typically a service that we contracted with um, EHOBI and I think GELCAP to do the, provide the services. And I think it um, wasn't working out very well as far as the quality of service. So uh, my understanding is between the bargaining unit and JFS, the management, they had been working on a memorandum of understanding to bring that house instead of it being contracted out and so this would be the two positions that are normally it's just for the summer no I believe they're full-time well it says oh I thought it said part-time there should be a request for recruitment page yeah oh yeah I'm, I'm looking at it. it says oh I'm sorry it says full-time it says okay. okay so these are two new positions yes but they come with funding yes from this initiative yep Yep, so it's money, it basically would be spent on payroll versus contractual. And they have a plan for what they're going to do with these students. <coughs> okay. Yes, yeah, through the uh, Ohio Means Jobs funds. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm familiar with the program. I just, I thought I saw it advertised by another agency, so I was just, yeah. you know, is, is the, uh, the former agency aware they're not getting the funding. Yeah, I think they are. Because okay, I think they're still advertising it. Okay. I'll follow up. Okay, mm -hmm. not my problem. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Mr. Old. Yes. Mr. Shelfman. Yes. Mr. 